One of the hardest things for an open source project to do is to make money. And if you think about it, really, there are very few FOSS projects out there that actually do make money or that have become successful financially. Things like OBS, Firefox, technically, I mean, their money comes from Google, but still they make enough money to pay a whole bunch of developers to do something. And there are a very few others that actually make money. But for the vast majority of open source projects, they struggle to make money. Now, some developers just do this as a hobby. It's not a big deal to them. They have other means of making income. And it's like I said, it's just a hobby. But chances are developers do need to make money for food, shelter, video games, things like that, uh, the essentials. And they're most likely going to be unable to do so in FOSS software. And that's become a huge problem almost across the board for open source projects. It would be very hard to count the number of projects that have either been abandoned or don't get updated very often simply because their developers had to go do something that actually made them money. Usually these developers didn't lose interest in the projects, they just had to actually feed their families. So the question I'm going to ask today is why is it so hard to get people to pay for software that's open source? And I have four reasons, but I just want to say that these aren't the only four reasons. I'm sure there are others that I just didn't think about or that I figured were too minor or that might have made the video go a little bit too long. So I'm just going to go over these four. Uh, and then if you have uh, other reasons why you think people won't pay for open source software, leave them in the comments below. Also, before we jump in, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, all that stuff. It really does help the channel. We're getting very, very close to 3,000 subscribers, and I'm really happy about that. So thanks to everybody who's already subscribed, and if you haven't, make sure you do so. So the first reason that people won't pay for open source software is that for whatever reason, we chose at the very beginning of the FOSS movement to use the word free. Free and open source software. Now, free is one of those words that has multiple meanings, in, at least in this instance. Sometimes when we use the word free, we mean free as in beer. That's the common saying, right? That means free as in you don't have to pay for it. Other times, the true meaning of free in, in FOSS means free as in freedom, right? That's the whole saying. It's become cliche at this point in the YouTuber community. Free as in freedom. That was a horrible choice in terms of actually naming something because most people, when they hear the word free, they mean or they think that that means no cost. And you're not going to change that. That's just the way the word works. That's the majority of people, when they hear the word free, especially people who aren't a part of the, the movement, the people who are evangelizing the liberty aspect of FOSS software, the people who just come in and use... Linux, because Linux is free, <laughs> you're never going to change the minds of those people because free means free to them. And it's just not going to you know, be something that you can change. So uh, I think that this may be one of the biggest hurdles and also the, the biggest roadblock, I guess, uh, to people paying for FOSS software. You don't pay for things that are free. That's just the way a lot of people look at it even though in this case we don't actually mean free is in no cost. So I think that's one of the reasons why some people have tried to change the word free to something like Libra or Libera or any of these ones, different words that kind of uh, spawn off the liberty and freedom uh, kind of mentality. But again, that movement towards using those different types of words just hasn't taken off. And, you know, that's a, a big a big problem, and I think that's probably the biggest reason why people won't pay for software. The second reason why people may not pay for FOSS software is that there are too many alternatives in the ecosystem. So, for example, let's just say Audacity, which was recently bought by a big corporation, decided that they were going to start charging. Because it's open source, and over a thousand people, people have already forked Audacity over the years. They, that means they have all the code on their GitHub that they can use under a certain license. Those people can then distribute it for free, and then there'd be no reason for anybody to pay the corporation that really owns Audacity you know, the money that they wanted to charge for it. I mean, that's just one theoretical example of something that could happen. 
And it's the same for any project that decides that they want to charge money. Why would you pay for a Linux distribution, say, for example, Elementary OS, when you can just use Ubuntu, which is free? Uh, it m makes no sense to people financially, right? And when there, there's all these alternatives to paid software, even if it is open source, people are always, most people are always going to gravitate towards the stuff that costs no money simply because that's the nature of people, you know? Y if you had had a coffee, two coffee shops, one of them offered toffee for free, one of them charged seven dollars a cup. Which one are you going to go to? You're going to go to the one that has free software, or excuse me, free coffee. You know, <laughs> it's just the way people think. The vast majority of people who use free and open source software aren't invested in the development and expansion of the community. The, they they're just here to use the stuff. And that's perfectly okay, right? But it also causes a problem where people need to make money when they develop this stuff and it's getting progressively harder to get people to pay for stuff. And it's the same thing outside of the open source community as well. In the Apple App Store, the free games do way better than a game that charges $30 up front. Uh, people, there have been studies where people are actually more willing to pay for a whole ton of money in game for like uh you know gems or fake currency, loot boxes, uh, than they would than they are that to pay for they're more <laughs> how do I say <laughs> I, I lost that that one there for a minute they're they're more willing to pay for stuff in app purchases than they are for than they, than they are why is that so hard to say they're more willing to pay for in-app purchases and then they are to pay for an app up front out of pocket so <laughs> that i don't know why that was so hard to pay but for whatever reason the free thing in the app store is just way more attractive and they're much less averse to paying money once they get into the app now whether or not that's something that could be adopted in F foss projects i don't know uh, i'm literally just thinking of it right now if you gave away the software for free and then pay uh, offered in-app purchases for like extra features maybe that could work or something i don't know so too many alternatives that was the second point why would you pay for something if there is a free version available most people are going to look at it that way so the third reason is that there are just it's too hard to pay for FOSS projects and what i mean by this is that if everyone if every FOSS project decided to start charging for stuff There'd be multiple ways you'd have to pay for it. and you'd have to trust not only that you're, you're giving you, you know them your credit card information and stuff like that, but you'd also have to trust that you know it's one more point of failure in terms of having your uh, credit card information out there. Now, obviously, there are systems in place like PayPal and stuff like that that's you know possible, but there's just so many different ones. Like there's PayPal and there's Patreon and there's Libra Pay and there's you know, the GitHub stuff, and, you know, it's every single place, and it's not only is it a trust issue, but it's also, like, oh, I'm, I'm, I have to have an account in order to uh, pay for this? I mean, like, it's really hard to take money from somebody and also not gather some kind of information on them, so a lot of people use Linux and open source software because they don't have to give out that information, and when you collect money almost universally, uh, unless you're using some kind of anonymous payment system, like uh, uh, cash, uh, you know, that project is then going to have some kind of record of that transaction, which probably will entail at least your email address and probably your name as well and your credit card information. So that's a that's a big deal. And I don't know that it's necessarily the biggest deal for most people. I still think that most of it's just the idea of free software. But I know personally, it'd be very hard for me to justify giving money to the smallest of projects because I don't know that I can trust them with any information, right? So it's it's the thing. Now, like I said, there are payment servers and services out there that take some of that trust, you know, and put it on more trustworthy actors. Like, you kind of can trust GitHub to not leak stuff, but I mean, or at least you can trust them more than, say, just, you know, random Joe Schmo developer, you know? Same thing with PayPal. The fourth and final reason that I thought of is that it's really hard to justify giving money to an, a project that you don't know it, if it will exist in a month, two months, six months, or whatever. 
flash projects die and get abandoned all the time. I mean, it's just a way of, it, it's just the way it works. And even if they're well funded, they can still be abandoned because just because you've given a project some money and a whole bunch of other people have given projects some money doesn't mean that they the developers have to go through and continue to develop this thing. A, a good example just recently happened that Glimpse that was a fork of GIMP, uh, you know, they had uh, a lot of backers. People gave them money. I don't know how much money, but they definitely had some financial support. And the developer just couldn't justify keeping going. And it's been abandoned, even though they had financial support. That stuff happens all the time. So once you've gotten past the idea of not wanting to pay for free software, free software, you also have to deal with this uncertainty of whether or not you, the investment you're doing, your, uh, the investment you're giving, uh, your donation, is going to actually uh, ensure that your pro or the project that you're investing in is going to continue on and be updated and be developed for a long period of time. It's a it's very hard to justify giving money to a like I said to a project that you don't know will always be there and it's a real issue for a lot of people simply because when there's this mentality that if you pay for something if you uh, donate to something even you're expecting that thing to at least exist for a little while you're expecting your donation to make a little bit of difference in order to ensure that that project stays for a little while and uh, you only have to be burnt once you know those people who invested in GIMP or in Glimpse those people may not ever donate again. I mean, at least the smaller. I mean, if it's a, the people who are very invested in the FOST c community or whatever, those people probably aren't going to be too hurt by it. But if you were brand new to actually giving money to a FOST project and this project has now been abandoned, you may n decide never to give money again because you've now been burned by that. You know? So it's it's a it's a problem. And it's not a problem that has an easy solution. Because it's like a chicken and egg problem. You have to, the projects need money in order to continue. Uh, but just because they get that money, they may not continue. Uh, you know, it's, it's very, it's a very complicated problem. So that is it for this video. Like I said, there are probably more reasons why people don't pay for free software. And I'll probably think about five of six of them right after I'm finished recording this. Uh, but if you have any more reasons why you don't think people will pay for f open source software, leave them in the comments below. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at the LinuxCast. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast. Before I go, I'd like to take a moment to thank our current patrons, Devon, Marcus, Meglin, Donnie, Sven, East Coast Web, Merrick, Camp, and Mitchell. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.